Welcome to Real Physics. Today I will explain why a very simple physics experiment is much easier to understand with an alternative model of the Sun. Now I have made a couple of videos about the Sun and an alternative model and this is just one short argument in favor of that alternative model. To understand the argument we need to consider this very simple experiment. Now a sodium vapor lamp emits light of very distinct frequency. We know that it's 589 nanometers in wavelength and if you put a camping stove with a flame in front of that light beam it happens nothing. You would see just the screen illuminated but if you put sodium chloride which is ordinary salt in the flame something very remarkable happens. You see a shadow. Why is that? Because you see this precisely 589 nanometer light emitted from the lamp hits the sodium atom in the flame. Now what happened, the sodium atom again can absorb that light and re-emits it but in a random direction. So if you look in the previous direction, which is what you do when you're on the screen here, you don't see most of the light coming from the sodium lamp, but you see just the, well, the sodium crystal which distributes the light in all the directions and that's why you have this shadow here. Now this, if you really understand this experiment, it's not difficult anymore to understand the spectrum of the sun, what happens here, and it's one of the most spectacular discoveries in solar physics. Well, people didn't know about that at the time. Josef Fraunhofer, a physicist back in 1800, managed to put together different types of glasses and to produce lenses that did not have chromatic aberration any longer and for that reason were much more precise in measuring wavelength. And that happened in a monastery south of Munich and then he was able to measure with his new telescope that spectrum and he discovered all these black lines for which at the time nobody had an explanation. Only 50 years later then it was discovered by Kirchhoff that these black lines were actually fingerprints of given atoms located above the solar atmosphere that absorbed and re-emitted light as in our little experiment before. Now a modern version of this Fraunhofer spectrum is very spectacular, much more precise of course. You, you see these black shadows, these black lines here. This one would correspond to the sodium 589 as before. But you don't have only the Fraunhofer spectrum. You can also look laterally at the atoms and see what they scatter to the side. And that's what you can observe with a spectrum of the corona or the chromosphere. This picture is taken during a solar eclipse and then you see deflected at right angles this spectrum, this positive spectrum with given lines that again identify certain atoms sitting over the solar atmosphere here. So if we summarize this black shadow on the screen would correspond to these black lines in the Fraunhofer spectrum and this light coming out laterally would correspond to the chromospheric spectrum. And of course, instead of just one line of yellow light, you have a continuous spectrum of the sun itself that produces all the light in the beginning. Now, what's the problem here? The standard model solar atmosphere says that there is no real surface, but just one phase, just a gaseous hydrogen, mostly in molecular form. And the standard model, even if there is much evidence for a clear surface, must postulate that this molecular hydrogen, which is clearly not a plasma at 6000 Kelvin, must somehow become opaque in transparent in the range of 500 kilometers here at the photosphere. And at the same time, it must be totally transparent in the chromosphere, which is slightly above. You see the difficulty here? It's the same substance, the same stuff, the same molecular hydrogen, maybe with a little bit of foreign atoms, but nothing substantially different, but with very different properties. This photosphere is totally opaque, totally intransparent. It just emits light 
but just from the surface, not from beyond. And the chromosphere, on the other hand, is totally transparent and just has these foreign atoms we see in the Fraunhofer spectrum. Now, the alternative instead is the liquid metallic hydrogen model developed by Pierre-Marie Robitaille, an eminent physicist who held the world record for nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. And he developed this model of the atmosphere consisting of liquid metallic hydrogen or a semi-metallic state, which makes much sense because it can easily produce a black body spectrum. Maybe Robitaille would not agree that it's plasma here, but that's a sideline. And then you would have the chromosphere above, which is, as a matter of principle, transparent and contains just some of these atoms responsible for the black lines in the Fraunhofer spectrum. Now, I think this is just a very intuitive and simple explanation of this rather sophisticated picture we have of the surface of the Sun. But you need two different states. And, of course, it's very different from the standard model, and then what you have to do is to check the consistency. The big difference is, say, in density, and you need much a much higher density to form that metallic state. It only forms under huge pressure. That's a paper in which I did a tentative calculation that it's possible, and as a order of magnitude estimate, I arrived at the correct height of the chromosphere. There is an interesting detail. One renowned astronomer, Harold Zirin, says years ago the journal was filled with discussions of the height of the chromosphere. And, well, I'm essentially, theory says it's just 1,000 kilometers or 2,000 kilometers, but if you look, just look at it, it's 5,000 kilometers and more. And I think it's pretty consistent with what I found out in my paper. Now, one more detail to add. The Fraunhofer spectrum and the chromospheric emission spectrum are not precisely analogous. They're not precisely complementary, as I suggested before, because you have lines that can only originate from chemical processes. Robert I did a lot of detailed videos about that. So you have chemical reactions here in the solar atmosphere, not that thermal equilibrium with very low density the standard solar model suggests. So another possible experimental proof would be comets that come very close to the surface of the Sun. I think you could distinguish then a very high density from a low density. But I think we already have sufficient evidence that this alternative model makes a lot of sense. And I explained the continuous spectrum in another video. And if you want to know still more details, there is my book The Liquid Sun about Robert Heiss model. And even more detailed, these are the German and the French version, even more detailed would be Robert Heiss papers. He did excellent work also in history and various aspects of stars and sunspots and many other details. Robert Heiss YouTube channel is also worth a visit. And yes, I believe that we have a problem in today's science because we tend to form complicated models, many people working on that, and we are missing a scientific culture of truly understanding the nature of physical processes. I think that is a change that we observe in the middle of the past century, and this is my book, Make Physics Great Again. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it, and if you're interested in fundamental questions, subscribe to this channel.